Good evening and welcome to the 2019 Division III Football Selection Show. I'm your host, Matt Schumacher. 32 teams continue their seasons next weekend in pursuit of a national championship. And that title showdown will take place on December 20th in Shenandoah, Texas at the 2019 Stag Bowl. Will Mary Harden Baylor continue its run of dominance and win its third championship in four years? Or will a new program reign supreme in 2019? Action starts next Saturday with first round games all at campus sites. Who's in? Where are they heading? With only five at-large berths up for grabs, who gets the lucky nods? We will answer all of those questions in a moment. But first, we'd like to welcome the chairman of the Division III Football Selection Committee and head coach at Lake Forest College, Jim Catanzaro. Jim, glad to have you with us. My pleasure. We're happy to be here today. So with only five teams getting at-large bids, I'm sure that makes it really difficult for the committee. What goes into the consideration when determining those five at-large selections? Yeah, the, uh, the biggest things are the uh, strength of schedule that each team plays, uh, both in and out of their uh, region, and then their regionally ranked wins are the, the two criteria that we really spend a lot of time looking on. Any head-to-head -head competition that we can draw across regions is absolutely gold nuggets for us. There's just not a lot of those, unfortunately. And so we look for those teams to challenge themselves both in and out of the, the season, and uh, most importantly, win a lot of football games. No doubt. Let's dive into the first quarter of the bracket. We'll be with Jim all throughout this selection show as we begin with defending champions Mary Harden Baylor. The crew have won two of the last three national championships and played in three straight stag bowls. Mary Harden Baylor has been to the postseason in 16 consecutive years and brings a four-year record of 54-1 and into the playoffs. That lone blemish came against Mount Union in the 2017 national title game. How about that for a winning tradition? Only Mary Harden, Baylor, and Mount Union have advanced to at least the second round of the postseason every year since 2004. Redlands gets the first round game at Mary Harden, Baylor. Redlands takes one of the five at-large bids off the board, so welcome to the postseason. Head coach Mike Maynard captured his 200th win this season and now ranks ninth all-time amongst active Division III coaches with 205 total wins. The Bulldogs lead the nation in turnover margin and are tied for third in fourth down conversions. Moving on, Barry will host Huntington in the next first round game. A pair of automatic qualifiers here. Barry is the winner of four straight Southern Athletic Association titles while Huntington makes its fourth appearance in the Division III playoffs in the past five seasons from the USA South Athletic Conference. Welcome to the tournament, Wisconsin Whitewater. The Warhawks suffered their only loss of the regular season on Saturday night and during a 27-20 defeat at UW Oshkosh. The Warhawks, at 9-1 overall, share the 2019 Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference title with the Titans and Whitewater now has a conference best 37 league titles. And in the last decade, they've been a primary contender in the NCAA playoff, winning six national championships in the last 12 seasons. The Warhawks will host Monmouth, the automatic qualifier from the Midwest Conference. They've got some skill up front. Let me tell you, their offensive lineman Joe Crawl has gotten interest from more than half the NFL teams. The last matchup in this portion of the bracket finds Hope hosting Wartburg. The Hope Flying Dutchmen were perfect in their pursuit of a 14th outright Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association championship since 2007. It was the first time they have gone undefeated in conference play since 06, while Wartburg's win over Loris College on Saturday crowned the Knights co-champions of the ARC with Central. So, Jim, as you look at this region, it features, of course, defending national champion Mary Harden. They've won two out of the last three titles. What has made this program so successful in your mind? I think great leadership from uh, Coach Fredenberg um, is one of the things that they see, and their talent is unmistakable. When you see the players that they have year in and year out, um, they've really built a program that's going to continue to be successful. Um, I think seeing them up close in person the last couple of years at the Stag Bowl has really shed a light to me on how in-depth they take their preparation 
uh, for their football team and, and not leaving any stone unturned. It, it's probably been the best professional development experience I've had the last couple of years is following them at the, the Stag Bowl and seeing the different things uh, that they do. Trying to get back there for the third time in the last four seasons. All right, let's continue down the left-hand side of the bracket now as we take a look at this next section. Wheaton will host Martin Luther in the first round. The Thunder boast four shutouts this season to add to their undefeated play. And against uh, Carthage, they had a huge victory, clinching a share of the CCIW title and a postseason berth for the first time since 2016. A massive win for Wheaton. On the other side of this matchup, Martin Luther secured its second consecutive Upper Midwest Athletic Conference Championship with a 53-20 thumping at Crown College on Saturday. Welcome to the tournament central. The Dutch took down Coe College for a share of the American Rivers Conference title, ending a 10-year title and postseason drought for the league's most tradition-rich program. And what a sweet victory it was, scoring 31 unanswered points to defeat Coe, 31-21. This is Central's 21st NCAA Division III playoff berth. Taking on the Dutch is Wisconsin Oshkosh. UW Oshkosh is heading back to the Division III football championship for the fourth time in the past five years after upsetting nationally ranked Wisconsin Whitewater on Saturday by one touchdown. The Titans share the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference title with the Warhawks, but the Titans earned the automatic bid. Next is Chapman and Linfield, both automatic qualifiers. Chapman makes its third NCAA appearance after winning its third SCIAC title. They are the first Panther team in program history to go 9-0 in a season and the first team to beat a ranked program. They took down Whitworth and Redlands earlier this year. Meanwhile, Linfield comes off its 10th Northwest Conference Championship in the last 11 seasons. A lot of winning between these two programs. The final matchup on this half of the bracket is St. John's and Aurora. Saturday's win against Rose Holman enabled the Johnnies to become the eighth program in Division III history to reach 650 wins. St. John's won a share of its MIAC record 34th conference title going 7-1 in league play. On the other side, Aurora won the Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference Championship, marking its third title in the 12 short years that the conference has sponsored football. So Jim, as you look at this, obviously Chapman having a historic season. What stood out to the committee about this team? Their success against ranked opponents and taking down uh, Redlands for their conference championship was a big piece for us. They uh, had beaten Whitworth early in the year while they were ranked. And uh, this matchup against Linfield should be a good one. Linfield also beat Whitworth. And uh, so it should be a really good, tale, or good test for both those two teams. Certainly a really tough section of the bracket. You look at some of the teams in there, a, a rich tradition of winning. Okay, we've revealed 16 teams who are headed to the postseason. 16 teams remain. The second half of the bracket comes your way next. Unmatched passion. Unrelenting power. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The NCAA Division III Football Championship. December 20th at Wood Forest Stadium in Shenandoah, Texas. As a man. Touchdown. Unbelievable catch. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets to get your tickets today. Welcome back to the Division Three Football Selection Show. I'm Matt Schumacher. Also with me is the chairman of the Division Three Football Selection Committee and head coach at Lake Forest College, Jim Cadenzaro, providing all kinds of expertise throughout the evening here. Before we hear from Jim again, though, let's get to the upper right part of the bracket where we find Salisbury. The Seagulls enter the tournament with an automatic bid after an undefeated season at 9-0. They are paced by a high-powered offense 
that is ranked fourth in rushing, eighth in scoring, and 27th in the country in total offense. The Seagulls clinched the New Jersey Athletic Conference Championship with a 62-20 win over the TCNJ Lions. And trying to knock off Salisbury is SUNY Maritime, the AQ from the Eastern Collegiate Football Conference. Our next matchup is Union hosting Case Western Reserve. For the first time since 2011, the Dutchmen are Liberty League champions after their 31-21 win over Ithaca on November the 2nd. Union completed its perfect season on Saturday, hosting Rensselaer and winning 33 to nothing. Meanwhile, the Spartans of Case Western will be making their fifth NCAA postseason appearance of program history and the second in the last three years after reaching the second round just a few seasons ago back in 2017. Next in, Muhlenberg. The Mules finished the regular season undefeated for just the second time in program history. They are led by record-setting junior quarterback Michael Natkowski, who has thrown 34 TDs and only three interceptions. My man can flat out throw the football. The Mules won their 11th Centennial Conference title, and they are looking at a shot at the national championship. But first, they host MIT in the first round. With MIT's exciting 43-40 victory over Springfield on Saturday, the team will win its second straight NUMAC championship in the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. The last two teams in this pod are Western New England and Brockport. The Golden Bears won their fifth consecutive conference title this season and will be making their sixth appearance in the NCAA tournament overall. Their only loss this season was a 59-28 setback to NCAA Division I program Stetson in September. How about that for challenging yourself in the early going? Brock Park earns an AQ after winning their third consecutive Empire 8 Conference Championship. And so, Jim, as we take a look at these eight teams, how does the committee discuss individual personnel and performance when determining matchups in regions? For example, Mullenberg's QB is having one of the best seasons in college football. How much does a guy like that and his performance get discussed in the decision making? You know, we actually don't talk about the individual players. We just talk about how they produce for their programs. And so the wins and are going to be a byproduct of his performance. And if they have those successful games against top opponents, that's where his performance is really going to take that step for them. But it's about the team's success, not the, the individuals. Very interesting. Okay, just uh, eight spots remaining in the NCAA playoffs. Next in is Mount Union hosting Hanover. You don't have to know much about Division III football to know the name Mount Union. They are the winningest NCAA Division III program in history with over 800 victories. The Purple Raiders have won a record 13 national titles and will be making a record 31st playoff appearance. The Raiders won their 30th Ohio Athletic Conference title to make the playoffs this year. No football coach has won more games over the last seven years than Mount Union head coach Vince Karras, who has a 93-5 record. Karras has been part of 12 of the Raiders' 13 national titles as either a player, assistant coach, or head coach. Meanwhile, Hanover is the AQ out of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Our next host is North Central, clinching a Pool C berth. This is the Cardinals' 12th postseason appearance for North Central and its fourth straight. Wabash will take on North Central. They are the automatic qualifier from the North Coast Athletic Conference, and that should be a very intriguing matchup. Moving down, welcome to the tournament, Wesley and Framingham State. The Wolverines enter the tournament going 6-1 in and the NJAC after a 42-7 defeat over Christopher Newport on Saturday. Wide receiver Rahan Peel earned NJAC Offensive Player of the Week three times this season, currently leads the NJAC in both receptions per game and receiving yards per game. The man just knows how to win. Framingham State is the automatic qualifier out of the Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference. 
another good matchup in the first round. How about our final matchup of the tournament? It's Bridgewater and Delaware Valley. Head coach Mike Clark leads Bridgewater back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2005, and he does so in a year full of milestones. It's his 25th year as head coach at Bridgewater, and this season became the longest tenured active head coach in the state of Virginia. The Eagles won their 14th straight home game this weekend, which is a new program record, breaking the old mark, which was set in 2001, and by the way, they made it to the Stag Bowl that year. Pretty good history on their side. Delaware Valley is the automatic qualifier from the Middle Atlantic Conference. Jim, last set of teams here, which of course includes Mount Union, 13 national championships, unprecedented winning. Have we seen anything like this program at any other level? None that I have seen. I haven't seen any form of dominance like what you've seen from Mount Union. Uh, and they've done it over decades period. It's not just a couple of year run with a senior class or really talented group of players. They are the epitome of reloading year in and year out and continuing to have that success. Unbelievable, the tradition that they have created at Mount Union going for their 14th national championship year this year. They, like so many others, enter this tournament at an undefeated 10-0. Jim, as you look at this entire pool of 32 teams, and sort of how the selection committee went about putting it together. Uh, what do you make of this field here in 2019? Uh, it's one of the most competitive fields that we've had. The Pool C uh, battle was definitely the most difficult that I've seen on the committee. Um, the strength of schedules, the regionally ranked wins that were out there for some of the at-large teams that maybe picked up an early conference season loss really made it difficult to, to hammer down those five teams. But I think we got the right five in, and I think that the teams all have a path to the championship. They just have to win five games to do it. A brutal stretch, but there's nothing better than postseason football. Jim Catanzaro, thank you so much for joining us tonight and providing your insights. My pleasure. Great to have you with us. There you have it, fans, all 32 teams who are still alive in pursuit of a national championship. Make sure you check back here on NCAA.com for updated results and news throughout the tournament. The championship game is on December 20th in Shenandoah, Texas. You can catch that title contest on ESPNU. For Jim Catanzaro, I am Matt Schumacher. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations and good luck to all the student athletes competing in the 2019 playoffs.